Uh, incoherence arguments. Well, a concept could be held to be incoherent if it simply doesn't adhere together. In other words, the parts that we have in the concept, the basic ideas, simply don't fit together in a way that allows us to determine that this is a val valid concept. So it doesn't allow us to determine what we're talking about. So the problem here for the incoherence of a concept is either what we're talking about cannot exist because it's completely incoherent, it, it involves a contradiction or inconsistency, or it's actually unclear what it would mean to be talking about this thing in the first place. Let me give you a couple of sample run-throughs here. Concepts can be vague. In other words, they could leave clear, unclear, how exactly we know what we're talking about, um, how exactly we'd find one of these things. Now, let me suggest to you, if I were to ask you to go find me a newt pick in the next room, and I gave you the criteria that this thing was existing and blue, do you think you could go and find it? Would you have a, the least clue what you were looking for? Well, existing kind of, that identifies absolutely everything that you might possibly find. And you might get lucky and there'll only be one blue thing in the next room, but that would be a pretty big chance. On the strength of that information, my concept of blue, sorry, my concept of Utpik is actually completely vague. It doesn't allow us to identify what the heck I'm talking about there. Let me suggest some things about our concept of God. If you take a, look, take a look at a large number of the attributes that we give to God, God's being all-powerful, all-knowing, all-good, non-spatial, immaterial, eternal, these concepts render out to be saying something about the absence of limits. In other words, we have an ordinary, everyday concept of power, while God, being all-powerful, blows the limits off, off the concept of power that we have. God is powerful without limit. Same goes for all-knowing and all-good. We seem to be talking not about something specific, but rather about the absence of limits on an idea that we understand from a, a different context, perhaps. Uh, Non-spatial, no spatial limits. Immaterial, something that's not material. And eternal, something that's not limited in time. Now, if you run through and you think about what's being picked out by these attributes that make up part of the definition of God, or part of our concept of God, you realize they're pretty close to nothing. Because if you try and specify what a non-spatial thing is, well, we're overwhelmingly spatial. It's going to be very difficult to conceptualize what we're talking about there. If we're talking about power without limits, well, it's not the strongest man you happen to know, and it's not the gorilla that's stronger than him, and it's not et cetera, et cetera. It's not Godzilla or King Kong or anything like that. In fact, there's no specific something or other that we, we could be talking about there. It's power without limit. Now, I'd like to suggest that the way these attributes come out is it suggests that our concept of God is actually quite vague. We may not be able to tell God from absolutely nothing at all. Now, I mentioned another way of doing this. It might be that our concepts contain contradictory notions, such that they couldn't possibly be true at the same time, and therefore our concept um, describes an impossible object. Now, the classic example of this is the square circle. A square circle would have to have both straight sides and curved sides, and when you try and think about how exactly they fit together, you realize this just isn't going to go. So, when we have a situation like this with a given concept, we're looking at an impossible object, something that couldn't possibly exist. Now, let me suggest some things about the nature of God. There's a large number of issues like this. I'm going to only run you through a couple here. Um, omniscience, perfect knowledge. Now that seems to imply that if there's anything that could possibly count as knowledge, God would have to have that. Now, certainly anything that a human being could possibly know would have to be something God would know since we're miserable, finite, created little creatures and God, of course, has all this perfect knowledge. Now, I'd like to ask, could God know how to make a slap shot? And let me make a distinction here. There might be a series of propositions or statements about how you go about making a, a, a slap shot. That's not the kind of knowledge I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about the knowledge that Bobby Orr maybe had. I'm thinking about the, the knowledge that is embodied in 
how exactly you go about making it. In other words, skillful knowledge. It's the knowledge that all of us have about doing a wide variety of physical actions all, all day long. Now, God can't have that kind of knowledge unless he has a body. And it's typically thought of that, well, well, bodies are limited in space. I start and end at these points here. Well, if that's the case, then God is non-spatial. God couldn't possibly have this kind of knowledge because God is not embodied. In other words, the skills that we have as ordinary human beings, the knowledge that we have about how to do everyday tasks, is something that God couldn't have. Now, can God know the feeling of lust? Well, the problem is that God is morally perfect according to the story. And if that's the case, then not only should God not do wrong things, it would be much better if you can imagine two different situations here. Uh, you can imagine me doing something that's the right thing and really resenting it, not liking doing it much. And you can imagine me doing the right thing and actually liking to do the right thing. Now, it's pretty clear that liking to do the right thing as well as doing the right thing is a much more superior morally position, um, and God should have that. So strictly speaking, God should not be able to be acquainted with the feeling of lust. Now, once again, I'm not talking about him just knowing what the word means here. I'm talking about him knowing from direct experience what lust is, something that almost every human being, I should imagine, has some experience with. We all know what lust is. God couldn't. Can God know fear or despair? Well, the trouble with fear or despair is that uh, when I'm fearing, when I'm despairing, I'm concerned about my lack of power in the cosmos to protect myself or to ensure good things come about for me. Now, if God's all-powerful, God should never be in the position to feel fear. So once again, it's not propositional knowledge we're talking about. It's not the fact of what fear is. It's the direct acquaintance we have with the sweaty palms and the shaking and that sort of thing when we're terrified. Now, that leads us to some things that clearly human beings do have knowledge of and God couldn't, according to the standard concept. These are incompatibilities between God's knowledge and his incorporeality, uh, moral perfection, and his all-powerfulness. But now, any Christian in this audience right now is thinking, hold on, buddy, what about Jesus? Because Jesus lived as a man, suffered the torments of being a human being, and et cetera, et cetera. So goes the story. Well, what about Jesus then? Well, is Jesus identical to God? Now, I, re I realize this is probably quite a difficult theological question, and I should probably keep my nose out of it. But let me, let me suggest this to you. Jesus was spatial, but God must be non-spatial. Jesus was material, but God must be immat immaterial. Jesus was temporal. He lived some 33 years, began and ended in time. God's eternal. Jesus was finite. God is infinite. And Jesus was limited, and God is all-powerful, all-knowing, and all-good. Could Jesus and God be the same person? Well, it looks like Jesus ought to be an impossible object and could not exist. Um, the historical evidence beside the point. Um, okay, I think I'm running out of time pretty badly here. So you get what my point is. If we have these ideas built into the concept of God, they don't fit together very well. And if that's the case, then it seems like we just might be talking about an impossible object, something that couldn't ever exist. Now I'm going to skip on quite quickly here. Um, yeah, I'm going to skip over that. I'll come back to that maybe later. <clears throat> 